Good morning, my neighbors! Well, good morning, you sexy mother hubbards. It's Tuesday, and it's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the Daily Express this morning, brutally honest, they say, channeling one Kemi Badenoch. The Tories need to stop acting so much like Labour? <laughs> do the Conservative Party act like Labour, do they? Right. Are they all about social justice? Do they have their membership campaigning for proportional representation? Are they suddenly all about fiscal competence? Less obsessed with funneling contracts out to all of their donors. I mean, it used to be your battered and bruised, jaded and disillusioned Uncle Paul who would say, oh, I don't know who to vote for. They're, they're, they're all the same. Now even the leadership contenders are buying into it. <laughs> Of course, the reality of the situation is that the two main parties have been, policy-wise, quite similar of late, over the last few years. But that is because the economic paradigm that we exist in is so fundamentally flawed and ferociously f***. We do have a ballooning national debt. We are suffering from a drudgy, not even really their growth pattern. There is a baby shortage and an ageing population that desperately needs some way of funding it. And so economists and people that are serious about economics are left with few options, few solutions as a way of fixing these issues. In short, if you have no growth, lots of public expenditure, and you don't want to borrow and increase the national debt, realistically, all you're left with is high taxes. But in implementing or perpetuating those high taxes, you of course open the door for this narrative to be woven by opportunistic conservatives like Nigel Farage, Richard Tice, Kemi Baden, Ox, Suella Braverman. When they say, oh, 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 hold on a second, we appear to have abandoned conservatism. We're, we're supposed to be low tax. If you make me leader, I'll lower taxes. But people who still have attention spans and memories longer than a TikTok duration will recall that one Lizzie Truss rode in on a low tax agenda. And although moronic home counties, small C conservatives celebrated her, the Bond and Sterling markets promptly shit themselves inside out. Over to the eye now who report on the UK restricting arms sales to Israel. This is a story that after nearly a year of Israel bombing women and children, schools, hospitals, over in Gaza, supposedly in retribution for the October the 7th attacks, although, you know, since forever, like people have been saying, there's no Hamas in the West Bank and you're, you're bombing that as well. Oh, and lots of people basically saying that it's a land grab because oil was discovered off the coast of Gaza about seven years ago. And so lots of critics are saying, this is just Netanyahu trying to take Gaza, then they'll build a load of nice pricey beachfront Israeli properties there. They'll take the land, they'll take the oil. And in so doing, they are carpet bombing leveling Palestinian structures. The whole thing's a genocide. And anyway, since, since that bombardment started, Millions of people have been protesting. They get derided as hate marches. Other people have been saying this is this is literally a genocide. Others then say, oh, how, how could you accuse these Jews of genocide? Do you understand the historical context of what you're saying? That sounds that sounds pretty anti-Semitic to me. Anyway, now, you know, months or nearly a year after the bombardment started, finally, the UK government, which is now obviously Labour, would be a different situation if it was still Conservative. Now the Labour government is saying, do you know what? We're going to restrict arms sales because this is, well, this is not cool, bro. Now, much like taking a water pistol away from a toddler, Netanyahu is far from pleased about this latest development. But just for balance, I don't suppose Palestinian families are particularly delighted at having their limbs blown off. I mean, the ridiculous thing about this really is, is that we're not even stopping arms sales to Israel, even now. We're just restricting. We've gone from, let's say like 100% arms sales, they've reduced it by about 30%. That's it. We're still sending bombs. We're still loaning planes. We're still looking the other way while mourning parents carry the corpses of their dead kids. Honestly, the whole thing is so f And do you know what's so bewildering about the UK's stance on this geopolitically? Is at some point, this is going to come back around and bite us in the ass. Like in about seven years time, once this has all kind of died down, once things have settled, people have buried their children, the fathers, the brothers, the uncles of those dead women and children. But they're not just going to look back at this period and go like, oh, well, that was a bit crazy, wasn't it? They're going to be angry. They're going to be vitriolic and they're going to want revenge. And some of them are going to move over here. They're going to either attack us 
personally, or they're going to end up hugely vulnerable to radicalization that takes place already in the United Kingdom. Like anyone with a brain can see this stuff like a mile off. And yet the UK government are like, well, you know, <clears throat> don't think we're going to do much. And uh, I'm sure it'll all turn out great. Finally, to the Times report that discussions are being had in the aftermath of the Oasis ticket pricing scandal to outlaw the practice of dynamic pricing here in the United Kingdom. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. That is. So something happened on Saturday that was upsetting to millions of people. And by Tuesday, we're talking about implementation of a law to prevent it, to prohibit it. That is incredible. That's like light speed legislation. And it really gets you thinking doesn't it? Like, is there some way that we can disguise the Gaza genocide as surge pricing? And if I could just bring this back to the original, like, Kemi Express headline for a moment, because this is a good example of the differences between Labour and the Tories. Why we aren't being governed by a sort of uniparty setup? Because if this was the Tories, right, if the Tories were still in power now and everybody had just got bent over a barrel by Ticketmaster with the dynamic pricing, here's what would happen, right? Everyone would have got overcharged. Everyone would get really angry about it. It'd be on the front pages of a few newspapers. And then what? Then, then you'd have an anonymous donor breakfast meeting between the Chancellor, <laughs> the Secretary of State for Business and Trade and Culture or something, the Conservative Party chairman, whoever that might be at that moment. And then you would have a representative from Ticketmaster or Live Nation. And then a conversation would go like this. It'd be like, yeah, we really, uh, we really like doing dynamic pricing. So um, would a cheque for £10,000... To CCHQ, would that make this uh, all go away? And then the Tory chair would be like, "Well, let's just say, uh, let's just say you have just bought yourself a ticket to get a seat at a table with the big boys. Welcome aboard." Next day, there'd be a press release from the Minister for Business and Trade, and they'd be like, "Well, you know, I mean, it's really, it's really nothing to do with uh, with government. You know, it'd be state overreach for us to to mess around." So, uh, sorry if you got overcharged. Sincere apologies to you, <laughs> but also go fuck yourself. Anyway, that's it for this one. Guys, I have a new video in addition to the paper review. It's coming out later today. It is my reaction, my thoughts and feelings about the Tory leadership candidates. Do go check it out. Hey, yo, alternative paper review. Coming in for you every day is the truth. Roasting the Tories, bring you the stories. A. Thompson talking blue in the room. Dude in the shed, big ears with a brew. Drunk off his head, it appears had a few. Age 42, saying what's new.